Um, Jake, how is this the mood? I can mm. finish this one. Um, do you care? Uh, they're excited, I think. I must be fair. They, um, you know, it's nice energy. We've got, uh, as I said to you last week, the one thing we, we've been talking a lot about is we want to improve every single year. Last year, we lost it to lose in the top 16 game. This year, we managed to host the top 16 game and get through to the next round of quarterfinals. Um, and so, I mean, it's, you know, for this group, if you consider that three years we play in this competition and uh, every year we've improved and improved, um, and I've talked about URC and two years in the Champions Cup, um, you know, to go in your year two, get into a quarterfinals top eight clubs in, in, in Europe or in this competition is obviously, you know, it's something we're proud of. I mean, how big of a game is it? Uh, I can't remember, there was the URC final, but then this one now finishes it. The team has matured to bring it back. How can you think? Yeah, um, look, I think the one thing, and I, I sort of always feel like I'm repeating myself to the same media all the time, but the one thing we have to learn is two weeks ago, we were under the pump against Leinster and we felt what it was like to have a really well drilled team that's handled pressure, that's played in, you know, three, six nations, a World Cup, one, two, Euro- I mean, played in two European Cup finals. Um, and so what I'm trying to create here is that I'm trying to create a squad that can play at this intensity and this level throughout our squad. Um, you know, it's not just a select few. The more you can get that appreciate pressure and understand, it's like I, I mentioned to you last week as well, when I came back from Leinster, when a team's got you by the throat, sometimes some coaches are reluctant to put reserves on because you think it's, you know, it's into the fire. I think for our growth process of where we are, I'm going to try and encourage as many times for these, for these players to feel what it's like to have knockout pressure, to play against international players. You know, if I look at a guy like, and I suppose the one example is you look at a guy like, uh, Reinhard Ludwig, see how he's improved in, in time, but that's because he'd been exposed to be playing. You know, he played Eben Etzepet one weekend and then he played, you know, uh, another massive lock the following weekend and then he's playing against Leinster and, you know, maybe he plays against Avtia next week. Yeah. I mean, the reality, the learnings in that are, are massive. Uh-oh. What's, um, do you challenge these guys to replicate, uh, last weekend's performance? I work them. Can they, can, can they, can they do it? I, I want to know. Well, look, I think it's, I try and challenge them every week on performance, full stop. You know, I think one of the things I said to you after the game this weekend was the reaction we had after getting, you know, the results we did against Nesta. Uh, and the reaction, reaction was to play like we did at home against Leon is exactly what you want to see. You don't want to see a team that if they, if they have a, a bit of a, you know, bad outing that that runs off on the next fixture. So it's not just about playing away. It's about these pressure games anywhere being good enough to, to have a performance that, that gives you a chance to win the game. And that's good game because you know, sports has perfect performance with this game. Yeah, not really. I mean, to be fair, I mean, yeah, they are, they were things we did really well. I think the way we, the way I like the way we interchange forwards and backs. I like the way we varied the way we played. Um, and I like the fact that we, we almost felt what it was like when Leinster had us in the same situation and we could replicate that. And so from a, from a performance point of view, and as you say, perfect performance, but just perfect in that we could sense that we, we took a lot of learning out of what happened to us against a Leinster team that can really, you know, attack well. Jake, two weeks ago, you said that there's nothing you can do in two weeks to beat Leinster. Yes. You against a team or up against a team that's similar, if not better than the Easter. Yeah. How do you motivate yourself and the yeah. players taking that into account? Look, Carl, so let me quickly, I don't want to take you on about this. I wouldn't say they're similar or better than Leinster. I think the bottom line is they, they, they as it stands, they, they number one in, 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 uh, the, the premiership. Indeed. So, I mean, they are the form team in England. Uh, they've won a, they've won a, uh, Heineken Cup. So, I mean, they, they've had the experience of as a club. Playing in it, um, I don't think I don't think it's necessarily like using Leinster uh, result or whatever now against Northampton. I think the only thing we must take into consideration is it's another opportunity to play in a you know in a stadium that's probably going to be sold out. Another opportunity already to play. Sold yeah, yeah. Okay, so sold out. Play in play in front of you know in front of a crowd 
play away from home, play against international players, play in a situation where it's all or nothing. Um, and that also is how you grow a squad. You know, I, I want to repeat myself, but we're not, we're not, we got to, we got to grow still. Now we I, I often speak to a lot of people and it took, take, takes teams years to get to the level that they, that they get to, you know? Um, and if you consider where we are, which is, I'm very excited about the fact that, I mean, people are wanting to watch this game. It's fantastic. You know, it's nice for the boys. Um, so I, yeah, I just, I just want to make sure that we get better and better every single time we run out. And, uh, travel arrangements, you spoke yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. It's not, but it's supposed well, to be. Well, it's not ideal. Let's be fair, boys. I mean, the reality is, it's, I've said it to you before and, and, and it's not the ideal. If you're talking about a high performance sport, you're talking about, you know, being able to be competitive. There are not many sporting teams that would leave on eight different airlines on a Tuesday evening to play a Saturday night game. Um, yeah. So for whatever reason, and I'm, you know, I'm sure that the powers that be will sort it out. Um, but it isn't, you know, it isn't, it isn't what it was expected. You know, I mean, I said this to you before, Cole, we were sold. It's an overnight flight and, you know, and that's why we're playing in Europe and, you know, two weeks ago we went to Leinster. It took us 28 hours to get there and 27 hours to get back. Now, whether we like it or not, that comes at a cost. That comes at a cost of, you know, whether we fly business class, and I'm very fortunate, our, our board pay for business class for our starting team, which is a fantastic uh, gesture on their behalf, and it is a massive bonus. But it isn't, I mean, no sporting team flies 28 hours. You know, no sporting team today, as I speak, flies out today with eight different airplanes, some to Birmingham, some to London, some land at nine, some land at two, some. I mean, there's no sporting team. When you're talking about a, a competition that you want to win, and you're talking about a competition where you want to be the best in the world. I mean, that, the one doesn't add to the other one. That's And that's where we've got to get to. You know, And I'm not... Yeah, as I said, I'm not going to stop stop saying that to you guys. If we want to be the best, we've got to get those things right. Jake, with that in mind, how do you manage the players leading up? You don't have much time. Obviously, you complete your preparations here, and you've got some rain to help you. But how do you manage the players, given all those different scenarios? Well, Brent, you know, it's, I'm so glad you asked me that question because we leave today. It's Tuesday. You know, ideal world, I would love to have left on Wednesday night, landed on Thursday, prepped here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. When you leave Tuesday, you know, and guys are sore on Monday after a really tough game against Leon, you know, people assume because it was 59-19, it's not a tough fixture. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a French team playing, you know, they play a certain style and they ask different, different physical attributes of you, you know, 59-19 can sometimes be a tougher fixture for you than it, than winning 15-10, you know, um, so. Now we leave on a Tuesday and that gives you limited time. Yesterday, Monday, they but saw Tuesday, you're basically trying to do as much prep as you can. You're going to get there Thursday. You can't have two teams training against each other because you don't have enough players to tour. And I mean, all those factors are, are, are important things. And I just want to remind it. I mean, Leinster came here last year and sent a team that we beat by 60 points. Now Leinster, they've got 30 something internationals had to do that in order to give themselves a chance to win two competitions. And we're talking about a club that's invested years and years into academy development, you know, into into producing Irish internationals. Even they had to, like you say, juggle. And and so, you know, I suppose the answer I can give you, we can only manage as best we can, you know, what, what is given to us. And what is given is, you know, it's a short week, Tuesday fly, Thursday limited training time because of the fact we're limited numbers. Monday a bit sore, guys are, you know, lots of guys have got niggles. And it's not on the back only of this. It's Dragons away, Leinster away, 28 hours travel, Leon at home. You know, it's, a, it's an accumulative effect of where we are as a group, you know. I was going to say, because you've also got a big fi- fi- fixture against Munster. Well, we're playing the week. champions of URC next week. You know, yeah. that's what people forget, you know. And it doesn't matter whether people go to yeah, but it's at Loftus and all that. They are the champions of URC. They came away from home and beat Stormers, who were the current holders last year, as we all know. They're out of the European Cup. They got two weeks to prepare. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be as prepared as they can for two weeks to play the Bulls in a in a game that we need to win and they need to win if we're going to stay uh, alive in hosting playoff games in in at Loftus. 
just uh, on the squad as such, um, is Gaza, Gaza Cameron, is he back? Or is he yeah, in? Cameron's back. Cameron's back. Yeah. Um, else? Uh, Cameron uh, Gumedi's back. So Gumedi's back as well. Bilo. Um, who else? No, those, those two guys are generally the you know, they're, they're two guys that have come back. You know? But, uh, you know, as I said, without giving my squad away to Brent, a lot of guys got dumped and bruised and a lot of guys are, are, are needing to be be looked after as well, you know. So it's it's one of those tri- difficult decisions for me to make, you know. Tuesday, limited training. Monday, couldn't train. Guys saw flying tonight. Yeah, so obviously a lot of, lot of things I'm going to have to work on in order to make sure we can tick as many boxes as we can. I was going to say, my other was going to ask, is, is anybody resting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, I'm, that's the, I think that's the secret. I'm going to have to find, find the balance. You got, again, so I'm glad you asked me that because Munster at home is not, is not going away, you know. And after landing, I think it's also important to understand we land on Monday. Not only do we arrive in different farms into England, we arrive different times on Monday into South Africa. So again, that means Monday. If you want to train, some go land at nine, some land at eleven, some come at two. So Monday basically is also tough for us, you know. Um, but I think it's very important, guys. That and, I, and I'm going to repeat it, Brent. I mean, Leinster sent their team here last year in order to, and they got sixty points, probably the biggest hiding Leinster have got in the last ten years from any club. Um, and they had to do it at the expense of making sure that they can be competitive in two competitions. Um, so, and we, whether we like it or not, we, we had a, we, we, we got a, we got a, whatever word you want to use, but we got a, we got a clear indication of what happens at Leinster away two weeks ago. And, uh, as a club, it's my responsibility to make sure that we, we, we narrow that gap as quickly as we can. Just in terms of your focus, I mean, you're very well positioned in the URC. Yes. And this game is sort of uh, almost, you know, a bit of a hiccup. Uh, uh, what, what, what are you going to focus on? On the URC or on this one more? What do you think is more important? No. I want to answer that by saying this. I want to make sure the club is as competitive as it can be every single time we run out. I want to make sure that we can become the Leinster of of club rugby. And and again, taking nothing away from La Rochelle, who've won it twice, to lose, who've won the championship five times, saying in the modern time now, for me, Leinster, with their academy, the way they bring players through. I mean, you guys know, I watched Jacques talking about uh, how nice it is in Ireland because of the detail and because of the, you know, the, the way the Irish players are. I mean, Rassi has said as many times as wax lyrical about Irish rugby and Munster and when he was there and the learnings he got and bringing Felix Jones here. So that is for me is where, where we need to get to. Um, and we, and there are a lot of things that have to fall into place. I mean, I'm going to give you guys a, a thing to understand that imagine if five years who's left in five years was still here. So Saturday's team would be Trevor Russing, Pierce Kuman, Edinburgh. Ludiocha Panasonic, Jason Jenkins, Le- Leinster, Erke Steinman, Munster, Liebenberg, Leicester Tigers. These are just Bulls players. I'm not talking about buying anyone else. Arne Buerta, Leon, Ivan van Sail, uh, Scrum of Saracens, uh, Pollard, Leicester, Jan Serpentine, Montpellier, Jesse Creel, Cannon, Madosh Tamwe, uh, Bordeaux. Now, you know, as I said, in the old days, those guys would still be here. They'd be training here, and we'd be able to, to you know, think differently to – and to, I suppose I'm answering your question by that. That's where I want to get to. And and when I get to that day, then then I'm going to be – then I'm going to be much more comfortable at the club here is going to be where I want the – where I would like the club to be. So that means, John Dobson said this week, you're probably, you're probably about two or three years away from getting yeah. to where you want to be. Do you agree with that? Well, that's John Dobson at think, you know. He's got to worry about how long it takes him. I want to make sure we get there as quickly as we can. And, and just hope, you know, people understand what I'm saying to you. So look, people look at photographs and memories and you want to bring back the good times. I would like to bring back the good times where the best players in South Africa are playing in their franchises. Then, then the answers would be so much easier for me to stand here and say, which one do you take serious? How would you pick your team? How would you rest them? How would, those answers would be simple for me because we would, we wouldn't be competing against a market that's got the players on the other side of the world. One more thing, uh, Jakob van der Walt, Henry Emmelman, used to those conditions. Where are they now? No, that's... Yeah, well, they're in the thinking oh, okay. this week. All right. Yeah.
Jack just got uh, oh, yeah. to check out of the Northampton yeah. Wednesday game for Sunday. Um, what I have taken out, Brendan, is that Northampton are a very good team. They're number one. They're number one in the Premiership. Uh, they play incredible brand of rugby. And if you look at their stats, it's not just they're only good at certain things. I mean, what I meant by that is they line out strong. Their defensive sets are very good. Their attack is, is strong. Their points scored are strong. Um, so it's not like there's one area where, you know, as I said, they just play attacking rugby or whatever, you know, they, they really balanced, well coached. Um, and, they, and they, there's a reason why they're number one. I mean, you talk about it. They've, 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 they've beaten Saracens. You know, they've beaten Bath. They think they've lost to Bristol twice, which, which again can happen, but I think they've only lost four times this year. So, I mean, they're, they're a really good team. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they, and I mean, it was, yeah, I, mean, I think that's why I think that makes that one try they scored from their own half as well. I mean, they, they're not just a team that, that sort of only do one thing. I mean, they're also quite balanced in terms of playing with their forwards and their backs. So, yeah, it's a, it's, it's another challenge we have and it's away and it's, you know, it's eight o'clock at night and it's, you know, and it's in a stadium that we all know is a, you know, is a, is a nice stadium to play in. Um, so it gives me an opportunity to sort of grow as a group. I think that's what I keep, you know, I keep thinking to myself is, I mean, John Dobson said it and he's right. You know. It's funny. John Dobson said that now. When I said that three years ago, you guys were looking at me like I was crazy, you know. I said to you, it's still going to take a while. And, and Coach, are you in a position to sort of give us your, your, your traveling schedule um, from Johannesburg all the way? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's very simple. We leave tonight. And uh, as I said, there's some guys going on Emirates, some guys going on Qatar, some guys going on British Airways, some guys going on Virgin, some guys going on Swiss Air, some guys going on Lufthansa. And the idea is that we get there tomorrow and obviously logistically we've got to make sure everyone gets fetched and carried and shuttles and, and then we'll arrive in, in Northampton tomorrow. Hopefully by, by lunchtime, everyone should be in the hotel. And then we, you know, then we're going to get ready and prep Thursday as a, with a training session. And then, and as I said, difficulty comes back when we come back because everyone has to then go back to, you know, different, different, um, Different, uh, I wouldn't say airports, but different journeys on the way home as well. Yeah. Some via, as I said, Doha, some via Dubai, some via Frankfurt. So it's not ideal. I mean, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that I'm totally confident as this competition, you know, grows and as people understand it, we'll get there.